Okay, so welcome back and this will be our last lecture for the course on Christian marriage and family. Um, as we had spoken in the last lecture, we've come to the last lap of the journey, which is um, being in an empty nest with the children having grown up and with the children having established their own homes, their own families, um, and uh, uh, making that, that journey into finishing the race. So when we see uh, uh, children leaving, it leaves the couple back alone. And this time you're on the you're on this side of the parenting where uh, um, you've completed the work that was given to you, um, done it, um, a lot of purposes, a lot of things that, uh, that you've carried on seems to be coming to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 some of them st is continuing, some being closed. So the years together have only, um, brought a lot more of growth together, understanding together, working together, um, uh, fulfilling God's purposes together. And now it is just taking time to enjoy the rest of the journey. So as um, a couple comes to that place, we're going to be looking at some insights on how they can make the most of what is left uh, in their lives, what is left uh, for them. Uh, so as you read in Psalm 84 verses 5 to 7, and I'm on page 195, if you'd like to follow along, Psalm 84 verses 5 to 7, I'll read that for you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools, they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in, in Zion. So through this, as we journey through the end, through the last lap, we see that uh, our hearts and our strength comes from the Lord. And our heart is set on continuously seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord towards our final destination, towards uh, what we know is going to be uh, a life forever with God. So, you know, this verse talks about, verse 6 says, as they pass through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, meaning uh, there may be times of weeping or times of struggles, but uh, you can make it a spring. They make it a spring. It says the rain also covers it with pools. So there may be seasons of dryness, seasons of mourning, um, yet you look forward to a place, you make it a place of rejoicing, you make it a place of strength, you make it a place of celebration. So how do you, you know, when, when you look in that verse 6, it says, pass through the valley of Baca and make it a spring. How we do that is just simply choosing to be thankful, to look at all uh, the good things the Lord has given, to rejoice, to be able to praise, to worship, to celebrate all the lovely things that have taken place and and continuously declaring what the promises of God, God has been. Uh, letting go of that which has been of the past with the the years or the times of regret or the seasons of mistakes or the seasons of failures, seasons of downfall, seasons of decline, overcoming all of that and looking ahead, knowing that God is faithful to bring down rain that covers the dryness and the barrenness that, uh, that we may have gone through. Because as we continuously look into um, uh, pursuing God, and building that relationship with God, we move from strength to strength, uh, no matter what challenges it, it may be. And, and as uh, people move into old age and into uh, being elderly, there are significant challenges that come by. But knowing that each step is, is, uh, is, is moving closer to a greater 
life and a reward with God. And to be able to look back at those memories, you know, as you, as we uh, read in some of these verses in and uh, Psalm 105 verse 5, you know, captures it so well. It says, remember the marvelous works of the Lord, what he has done, his wonders and the judgments that comes from his mouth. So when you look at, um, uh, as you keep moving ahead, it's not living in the past of all the struggles that have come by, but looking and remembering those memories. Um, uh, you know, e even in even in scripture, uh, as the uh, Israelites, you know, have moved from place to place, there were there have been times that they have set stones, and um, they they are stones that they set uh, stones that they set, and then they build an altar there. And every time people would pass through that, they knew that this was a place that showed God's faithfulness. Or even, you know, look at the a general walk of life. There are different milestones in our lives that when we look back, we know, you know, that was a time that I really saw the faithfulness of God. You remember those memories and you, you keep it in your mind. And, you know, as we were talking in the last class, if you know your grandparents, if they were good story storytellers, they would tell you of of how they have led their lives and what really marked things. And sometimes you may revisit that place, and they they give you these um, the goodness of God through those seasons. So even for us, as we keep going forward, to look back and um, uh, look at the way God has been faithful and how he has uh, established some of those those places, those memories, those, those uh, you know, uh, those stones, those cornerstones where we can look back and see uh, the faithfulness of God. And thereby, you know, looking back and knowing God's faithfulness, we make most of the current time that we have in the in the days ahead and use them as best as possible to impact those around us in whatever way possible because you know when when uh, when we look at um, our lives we know that god has has a purpose for us till the very last day um, in, especially you know when when you meet with elderly uh, it's such a blessing to hear from the elderly when they continue to live in hope because um, and and they continue to do whatever um, they may have in their place of influence it may be you know just um, talking to neighbors it may be just uh, um, going to church and worshiping it may be uh, passing on the legacy to grandchildren it may be still continuously doing some work they uh, the scripture scripture says you know the righteous flourish and the righteous will bear fruit in old age it's in psalm um, 92 verses uh, sorry need to look at the verse um, 92 verses 14 it says they still bear fruit in their old age and are always green and strong so one of this that we the benefits that we see that god gives us is um uh, in, in psalm 103 it says that uh, we our youth will be renewed like the eagles so even though our externals or our natural bodies may begin to fail it our spirits and our um, our uh, purposes for god continue to to still stay vibrant and still stay fresh now, as it says you know we will always be green and strong so we 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 ensure that we continue to live in this in the promise that god has given us that through till the end of our days we will continue to bear fruit uh, however we need to be walking in this uh, in this blessing we need to um, ensure that we can be useful to god and and co complete the purposes that he has for us another thing that we keep um, um, uh, in mind is to be able to continue testifying and being a testimony to those coming after us to be able to share and declare the uh, the the work of god to share the goodness of god to share the faithfulness of god we see in psalm 71 verses 18 it says now that i'm old and my hair is gray 
do not abandon me, O God, but be with me while I proclaim your power and might to all generations to come. So it is to till we can, we continue to do what God has called us to do is to proclaim God's power and God's work even to those generations to come. And lastly, um, as we look ahead, often we mm -hmm. don't know what may be going ahead. Uh, there are times, uh, you know, as a couple, there may be one person living alone, um, journeying alone, or it could be with with the spouse. Uh, whatever the, the situation may be, whether you are together or alone, uh, we are called to run the race to the finish. Uh, you know, we, we read that in, in uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the faith. I have kept the faith. Because awaits for us is a crown of righteousness, which the Lord gives to us on the last day. Um, and to all those who have loved him and who await his appearing. So whatever the situation may be, whether in health, whether in, in ill health, whether in togetherness or whether alone, we we continue to run the race to the finish, knowing that there is um, a fresh season awaiting for us. And we live with that hope to be able to fight the faith, finish the course, and keep it going till till the very end. Okay, so that's... that's uh, uh, that's coming to an end of of our uh, um, of our course of what we have learned. Um, personally, this has been a blessing to me. Like I said, every time we have a class, every time uh, you know there's a new batch of students, there are new insights, there's new revelation, there are new questions, there's new learning. Uh, yet God's word always satisfies, always proves to give give you peace and gives you gives you an answer to your questions okay so i'm taking going to take this time we have a good 40 minutes and i love that um just to open this out for testimonies and and this testimony is to give god the glory to um, uh, to um, really highlight what god's word has done in your work it's not about a person it's not about a course it's not none, none of that it's just to be able to uh, share what you have learned how god's word has transformed you maybe it's a um, it's an answer that you were seeking for. Maybe it's a prayer. Maybe it's somebody sharing here. Maybe it's uh, something specifically that was brought about by the word. So uh, I'm leaving this open. If we can have at least a good five to six people sharing or even more, uh, that would be great because this is encouraging to each one of us. So I'm leaving, I'm opening the forum up to uh, those who would like to share and bless uh, another. Yes, Shay, please uh, go ahead. You could unmute and speak. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, Shay, we can oh. hear you. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, um, I, I would start off by saying, um, you know, going through the classes on in this course, you know, just made me to think more about the church and it's been on my mind you know since we we be, begun that truly speaking if a church can get it at the family level uh, the church as a whole will be healthy you know so uh, my i think the lord has just kind of opened my mind to see how important the family and let's even start with the couple themselves, the couple and then the family, how they're so important, you know, to the wholeness and the health of the church, you know. And it's just making me think that what are the ways, you know, we can strengthen couples and families? Because I think if we can resolve many things in the home, <laughs> I think 80% of the problems we have in churches will be solved, resolved, you know. So I, I think that th this is one thing I'm going to take away from this course, you know, does this consciousness of the couple and the family are important 
in making the whole church healthy and spiritual to achieve whatever purpose the Lord has destined that church, you know, to fulfill. So this this is what I'm really taking away. And I, I'm hoping to even go through all the course material again, you know, just so that because knowledge is never um, enough, I guess, basically. And just again to say thank you. I know you you don't like the praises of men, but of course God uses people, you know, to sharpen another man. So I just want to say thank you, Mark, for being very practical and open and making this course um, worthwhile for us. Um, it was a good, good one with you. Thank you very, very much. I wish there could be a part two to this. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much, Ma. That's that's everything I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. I couldn't agree more that the family is the basic unit for God to show forth his glory and to bring forth uh, his kingdom. So if we get it right at the basic level, it keeps uh, going better and better. Um, in fact, one of the um, uh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in our first class, but um, when God gave the commission to be fruitful and to multiply, he gave it to a man and a woman in marriage first. And um, it is within the family that we make disciples first. And it is out of that that we make disciples in the world around. So our responsibility to make disciples happen within the home and then uh, towards in, in the church, and that it it uh, uh, it percolates much much easier. So well said, Shay, and thank you. And I'm so glad that you're taking back this vision. I pray that God would use um, the stirring that He's given in your heart to impact those in your community. Thank you, Shay. Yes. You're welcome. Like thank, you. thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Who'd like to go next? Yes, Christopher, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor. So um, thank you. Um, uh, for me, I think, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the marriage preparation um, is something that um, I think is, is really key. And um, as I understand, um, APC has for a six months um, preparation, um, and uh, just to just to uh, confirm, uh, how many times how many times in a month uh, do you all actually uh, meet with the couples? We meet every week every for an week, hour, okay. hour and a half every week. Right. So that's quite quite uh, quite quite comprehensive. I'm sure it's it's it's. Uh, Something that uh, I'm sure is uh, you know uh, has led to a lot of you know uh, you know a more um, fruitful uh, marriages. Um, unfortunately, I uh, I never did anything like that. Uh, neither did my wife, and uh, um, I think it was uh, uh, something that uh, you know. I mean, I don't want to go into. I mean, it's not something I have a regret for, but I'm basically I think that I feel that you know that that is that is very. Uh, uh, very key. Um, the other, I guess, point um, uh, maybe you have touched upon it also is um, um, not sure if there is uh, a course for um, a married couple who, you know, have their have their first child. Um, uh, you know, I think that is that's a really a momentous um, a milestone. And uh, some way of you know being able to tap into that uh, particular uh, you know uh, time uh, you know in a married couple's um, uh, you know um, journey, I think that would definitely help also uh, because um, uh, you know there are definitely opportunities for um, or, or rather not just opportunities, but also areas where um, married couples could be um, lacking in to uh, provide a, uh, you know, a environment, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for the child. And um, I'm not sure if that has actually been uh, included 
in in you know in, in any course uh, that's uh, that's available uh, in APC or uh, any of the other uh, institutions. So, just those are the two points I wanted to just mention. Thank you, thank you, Christopher. So, um, uh, we do encourage uh, pair, um, married couples, although yes, we take them through the parenting primer and the nurturing before they are married, but we always encourage uh, couples to come back for like a refresher course uh, at the time that uh, maybe they know that they are expecting for a couple of sessions. Um, that gets difficult to come because, you know, just for couples to organize themselves and be there uh, becomes a difficulty, but it is open and we have always uh, uh, invited them back for a refresher on specifically as they're going into the next um, phase of their lives. So that is av available. Uh, however, many people don't use it though. Right. Thank you. Yeah, because I mean, just to add, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, you know, married, uh, married couples who are expecting their first child, you know, they go through that, um, that uh, uh, process of uh, attending sessions you know, to prepare this is more of a kind of a physical uh, yeah. physical aspects of you know what goes on uh, uh, you know with the uh, with the woman and you know how the man can support um, uh, mm. you know the the, uh, the the wife and um, I think it's called a Lamas I think uh, one of those yeah. uh, I one of those names yeah so um, yeah. <laughs> I think if there's something that you know is, is similar to that it could be could, could be even online just to make it right. more convenient, but, you know, something that uh, makes them uh, more, uh, you know, um, ready for uh, for that for that event here. Yeah. Right. yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, uh, Charles, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Um... Sorry, Charles, I think we lost you. My Unable to hear you. Take call. Charles, we're unable to hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Yes. Okay, I said that this course is a refresher course for me and my wife and uh, I would share the things we, we were learning per unit and uh, I am I am one of the people that attended this course. So um, one was listening to was the way I'm supposed to handle issues for for other people, especially uh, young ladies and uh, and old men and those that come to me for help that I would listen to them uh, I would uh, I would be drawing lines I would be uh, jumping into judgment but uh, after this course or during this course I was able to know that I'm supposed to first listen and be able to pay attention and then as i pray that i would be able to get instruction from the lord and number three was about um the this the youths uh, i have youths at home and the the way to make them my friends uh, like right now we are still in the lockdown and we have been off school, the children have been off school for 84 weeks. So I think uh, this is the 85th. So, um, and now I am learning, I am putting in practice what we studied, uh, making my children my friends at a deeper level. So I am I'm thankful to the Lord that God gave you to us that you would be our mentor at this point of time. Thank you.
Thank you, Charles. Thank you so much. I must say that your questions have always been so um, intriguing. You've made me think. Uh, you know, there are times that I've said, Lord, I need wisdom to answer this. And thank you for uh, for being for sharing from your experience and uh, your ministry. That's really helped. Uh, and I thank all the brothers and sisters who are outside of our culture here. You know, a lot of your sharing has really given us, given me uh, a different perspective of what it is on on the other on in in another part of 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 our world you know our own brothers and sisters going through different things but thank you brother charles thank you so much uh anybody else would like to share It's open for sharing any thoughts, anything, maybe even a feedback or um, even some things that we could do better would, would also be very helpful as we move, keep going forward and reaching out to more. So even a feedback or uh, areas for improvement are also welcome. Please, uh, please take this time to do that. Apologies, I got moved out of the meeting. Yeah. All right. So is there anyone who'd like to um, share something? If not, we could just take a couple of minutes to pray um, and uh, we could close. Thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Sorry, I'm just reading what you said. Oh, that's nice. That he's he said he's never been bored in the class, and it's prepared you for marriage, and that's that's wonderful, Abhishek. We we bless all the youngsters. Yeah, I remember. I think the first time that we joined, and there was hope. I, I don't think he's there on this call. Yeah, hope. Uh, William was preparing to be married, and uh, I I pray and hope that those of you who are looking to be married um, have have been blessed uh, by by God's word and know um, what it is that really brings about joy and strength in the marriage is just God's word. So thank you. Thank you, Abhishek, for your feedback. Ma'am. Yes. Uh, yes, Abhini, go ahead. Uh, one thing I have learned and I have unlearned so many things. So being in this uh, 25th year of my marriage, I look forward to next innings of my marriage to be really uh, blessed by whatever I have learned. And I, I'm looking forward to fulfilling of men, fulfillment of God's promises that he has given. And as we have learned how to walk in them, claim them and be uh, blessed by them, I'm looking forward to that uh, change that we desire to see to not only be blessed in our own life but to bless others and uh, an, uh, another generation that is coming behind us uh, excited about uh, uh, how i'm going to talk to my daughter as she's now 20 how i can uh, you know relate with her in uh, in the way that lord wants me to and of course, uh, the w one change that I have uh, experienced in me is the way I talk to her now regarding things that are important. 
um, approaching her and being able to understand her perspective and then uh, able to guide her. So in this way, I've been really blessed and I thank God for helping me go through this uh, course in this uh, uh, time of my life, which has been really a blessing and it has opened my mind to th see things in a very, very different perspective. So because um, uh, we, we've never seen that happening in our churches where people are being prepared for marriage or they're being counseled and but now I feel that it is so essential and I pray that uh, what, whatever Brother Say said made every word made such a sense to me and really has blessed us. Uh, having a perspective from all the, just as you said, having a perspective from all over the world, what uh, we can learn in a broader sense. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being so graceful and loving to us. And, uh, and even when we, our questions were <laughs> so sometimes, um, uh, sometimes very, um, you know, childish also sometimes, but yet you were so patient and loving in answering all our queries and helping us go through this whole course in a very beautiful way. So thank you so much. And thank you all the classmates. Thank you. Thank you, Abhi. Thank you. Your questions were never childish. I think it was, it's wonderful to just be refreshed by questions. That's lovely. Yes, uh, Christopher, I think you have your hands up. I don't know if it was. No, sorry. Uh, yes, was, I yeah. actually have. Yeah. Yeah. I just have, I just wanted to raise a point and I have a question around uh, something that is quite relevant to, uh, you know, today's topic, uh, which is about, uh, you know, the, um, the kind of twilight zones, you know, or twilight zones, sorry, of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, I can't call it a marriage because it's basically one spouse has already passed away. Right. And um, that could happen, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, at a, at a more um, earlier age. And sometimes it's, it's much, much, much later. But I think the point I'm going to raise is that um, they are, uh, uh, I, I mean, again, I don't know what the percentage is, but there are, um, you know, uh, married uh, people, uh, pe uh, people who have who have been married, and then are have become, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, single in a sense, and uh, you know, they are widows or widow widowers, um, and uh, so uh, my point, my question is really about um, would uh, would it um, would one in encourage perhaps to look for a, for another spouse um, to be able to, you know, um, take them forward, you know, uh, you know, in, in that next journey because of the need for maybe companionship and, uh, you know, uh, a support uh, a structure. And um, um, uh, again, I, you know, there could be some kind of a, uh, you know, a marriage preparation uh, 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 course specifically for those for that category of of individuals and uh, so i just wanted to understand um, in your experience have there been cases uh, where this has worked um, and uh, whether that you know that that is something that would be um, would be uh, you know uh, encouraged and maybe even facilitated you know uh, to be able to uh, ensure that uh, there is there is some uh, level of companionship uh, and all the other stuff that you know that is available to uh, you know to to that to those uh, set of individuals all right um i think that's a that's a good question and an important area so um if uh, i think finding a partner post being single or being widowed um, is a decision that uh, individuals make. And um, I think as a church, we encourage that if, uh, um, you know, it, it definitely, I mean, we you remember we spoke about challenges when it comes to marriage and um, how, you know, what kind of counsel and wisdom is given depending on the, on the state of their singleness or state um, of their marriage and uh, accordingly is where either they are encouraged speaking to individuals and what they feel 
they may they may need uh, you know would they would they think personally that they require a companion or do they feel that uh, even as they continue into uh, singleness that they can fulfill the purpose of god but that that i believe is something that uh, um is individual specific and if there is someone who would uh, who would appear or who would like that yes it can be facilitated um going through a course would be revisiting this course but of course through a different light because there have been years that have passed by maybe with an initial relationship so uh, certain baggages that are carried depending on the situation on the relationship in itself and learning how to adapt and adjust and come forward in a in a new sense of the relationship so um, it's open it's open in my experience i haven't come across uh, a situation or experience like that so i don't have first hand uh, knowledge of it uh, as of yet but i i don't see it uh, mm, very uh, starkly different from from a, a couple who's going through a marriage uh, uh, course of course because of the age because of experiences that have gone by there may be each of these topics that we are looking at will probably have a lot more of uh, conversations around it a lot more of learning around it um, a lot more of mentoring through it and i i'd i'd also say it really matters the age of the people now for example uh, somebody like me who's maybe you know working with a couple who's possibly post 60 or post 70 um you know maybe a, a bit more difficult uh, because uh, personally maybe i haven't even gone through those experiences that they have so finding a good match or a good uh, fit for uh, helping couples like that i mean yes we we can help them seek the word and take principles from the word maybe for practical experiences uh, i think you know to establish a better network in order to help people like this would be would be what i see maybe necessary although yes personally i haven't haven't had an experience like this so um i may be lost on how to take that forward also to be honest right uh charles i think you you have your hand raised and then susan too so we'll take charles's question or feedback first and we'll have susan speak yes charles please go ahead Okay I think we'll wait for Charles. Uh, Susan would you like Hi, to Are you can yes, you hear yes. me? Yes I can hear you Charles please go ahead. Uh me I am at this point I'm moving uh a vote of thanks uh for your time investing your time in us. You know it is one one thing to know that God exists but also it is another thing to believe that god uh, to believe that god does work so it is one thing to be a, a christian but also to be a teacher so thank you so much for for your time you listen to us you don't know what you did to us you you have impacted us positively positively uh because we were able to unlearn some of the things that were not good for christian marriages so we are really thankful to you and uh, i don't know whether whether there will be an evaluation but uh, last is the la the other semesters would be evaluating but we are really thankful from the bottom of our hearts we we are saying it is possible for the faith of someone to help others believe in Jesus thank you for your um help for your selfless uh input that you were putting in this the whole of you you we could see the way you would listen and we are really thankful may god bless you may god meet you at your point of need so that you will continue to impact others amen 
Oh, Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, again. You never have a dearth of, of good words, Brother Charles. You never do. You're a storehouse of affirmation and, uh, and uh, encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Susan? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh today today i was very happy to hear that my ma'am also is a carolite as <laughs> i am also from kerala <laughs> but uh, married to a maharashtrian so i am staying here so your subject about family was very interesting and i got to learn many things not only i could impart it in my marriage but also in our church families and this course included everything about the family relationship uh, like uh, relation between husband wife relation between parents and children relation between uh, grandparents and uh, grandchildren and also you taught us mainly about uh, sexual life where this subject is not uh, taught openly in church but uh, it was very important so that uh, while we counsel other families we can tell them about this importance and also as we were busy in ministry we are not able to spend time with each other my husband and myself but uh, one day when you talked about giving time to each other i kept my mobile near his ear <laughs> and asked him to hear it <laughs> and really after that <laughs> and now we are trying to give time to each other so thank you ma'am thanks once again <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I mean, it's so lovely to know that, you know, classes like this can impact so many other people. Uh, I, I, I heard this somewhere else also, you know, they, uh, it's not in this class, but somebody else, somebody else was listening to what was being taught and they were very curious to know, uh, you know, from where the material has come from. And uh, this person said it's from scripture. And, uh, you know, that, that in itself, I think, opened up something is stirred something in their hearts and i hope that they have gone to the bible to read that amazing amazing the way god works thank you thank you so much thank you rose for um for what you've also put up for um uh for your comment thank you kennedy thank you yeah amen all right i think we'll uh we'll just maybe close with with some time to pray we are at 11 40. i think we should just uh number one just give thanks to god for for his word um that we have privilege to know about marriage from his word when so many people here in our midst are lost and have no hope and are groping in the dark to know how to live a good marriage. So uh, I think let's just thank God for that. Uh, I just want to maybe pray for all our marriages, pray also for those who are yet to find a partner who may be um, in courtship. Um, we'll take time to pray for that as well. We also will pray that uh, God would uh, stir our hearts to release what he's taught us, that we will be faithful to bring it to those around us, um, to help people either in, in your church community or as individuals or as your counseling or in your ministry, that uh, whatever we've learned, that God's, God will uh, help us to be faithful to impart what God has put in our lives. Okay, so let's just take some time to pray and uh, we can close. Heavenly Father, we just come to you with hearts of gratitude and praise. Lord, we lift our hands in worship to you, that you have handpicked and chosen each one of us to be as part of your family. You have given us the truth of your word. We are so, so blessed that we have the word of God with us for every practical area of our lives. Lord, for anything we have an answer from you. God, our hearts are so, uh, Lord, we don't have words enough to say how grateful we are, Lord, that there is this book of instructions, this book of love, 
that is poured out for us, Lord, that we can go back to it, Lord, like a life textbook and learn and seek our answers from it. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you have put this in our lives. You've imparted this. You have, you have poured it into our hearts. And we pray that, that um, as it takes root, Lord, that it will grow, Lord, that we will be those fertile, uh, that fertile ground, Lord, that will take your word and, and uh, bear fruit at 30, 60, and 100-fold, Father. Lord, we pray that our hearts will be that fertile soil that, that is able to, to bear fruit till, Lord, that you've called us, Father. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Father, that you have taught us from your word. God, we pray that uh, it will just not be an intellectual understanding, but Lord, it will seep right in, Lord. It will move into our bones and marrows. Lord, your, your word is living and active, Lord, like a double-edged sword, Lord, that, that pushes through joints and marrows, Father. Lord, and I pray that this word will, will make that difference in our lives, in our homes, in our families, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, for miracles to take place through your word as we impart your word to broken people, to broken families, to individuals, to back to our own church. Lord, we know, God, that your word has power to heal, has, has the power to save, has the power to transform. And as we, we speak this word, Lord, we, we want to see miracles taking place, God. May we bring forth and declare your word in faith, knowing that even a mustard seed of faith is enough to move those mountains of struggles and conflicts that they may be there in families and marriages, Father. Lord, the people you have entrusted to us, to counsel, to minister, to, to bless. It may be our own friends, our neighbors, our family members, um, the church at large. Oh God, we pray that what you have invested in us, what you have poured out in us, Lord, through through these couple of months, Lord, will, um, will, will be sent forth and it will accomplish what it was sent out for. Father, thank you for choosing us as your strong vessels, Lord, to bring forth your mercy and your goodness over them. Father, Father, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit be in us, Lord, as we release that word over people, Father, as, as we may counsel people, Father, that, that the word of God, Lord, will make the difference of change, Master. Thank you, Father, that you will help us to do it. And Lord, I commit every family represented here, Lord, whether it be a married couple, whether it be uh, couples with children, whether it be couples with grandchildren, Lord, whether it be singles, whether it be uh, young people ready to be married, Lord, everyone represented here, oh God, we pray for the power of your, of, of your love to be poured out on these homes, Lord. Lord, we pray for a protection and a covering, Father, every area that the enemy chooses to uh, to come against Lord we 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 declare the word of God we declare the power of Jesus we declare the blood of the lamb to to stand Lord as a blood covering over us father Lord we pray that every marriage represented here will be fruitful Lord fruitful um, in the way that they uh, present themselves Lord that each family will be um, it will be a, a, a testimony to your goodness and to your love Father, Lord, I pray, God, for every person here, as well as those who've attended the course over the last couple of months, Lord, Lord, that whatever challenges that they may be going through, conflicts that they may be having, misunderstandings, the pain and the hurt, the challenges that they face, Lord, would be, uh, would be dissolved by your love father would be made made uh, clear by by your presence father lord i pray that each each person would grow in their marriage stronger lord in understanding in love father may there be a heart of compassion a heart of kindness as we minister to one another in our own families may we as parents lord be loving parents may we be as parents represent god the heavenly father in every way that we parent Maybe may maybe want to establish the hearts of our children in your word, in your ways, in your precepts, Father. May may we be compassionate to their needs, Lord. Even those who have not reached salvation, God, may we stand on our knees to come to you, Lord, to implore to you for their lives and for their salvation, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for our elderly people in our homes, Lord, our parents, our grandparents who continue to pour out, Lord, into our lives. Father, we speak your blessing over them. May they be fruitful uh, at their age, Lord. May they be fresh and strong, Lord. May they continue to, to, to work, Lord, for your kingdom. Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, that that each of us, Lord, in, in uh, uh, that are here, Lord, will continue to speak, Lord, your word, that we will make disciples, Lord, of you in our homes, Lord, that we will be careful examples of, of, of who you are, Father, that we will be careful in our words, in our, in our thoughts, in our actions, Lord, that we will continue, Lord, to be that example of Jesus Christ. Give us the mind of Christ. May we be built with the attitude of Christ, Father, in the way that we deal with each person that you've entrusted to us. Father, we pray specially for our children, Lord, all the children God represented in, in this group, in this classroom. Lord, we pray that our children will be taught of you. They will continue to uh, carry on the legacy of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will bear the testimony of the Lord, Father. Lord, that they, they would have your spirit poured out in them, Lord, each one of them, each one of our sons and daughters, that they will have the spirit of the Lord in them, that you will bless them with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, Father, that the fear of the Lord will be their strength, will be their wisdom and their knowledge, Father. Lord, we pray, God, that they will be protected from the from the uh, attack of the of the evil one. That they will gird themselves up, Lord. They will clothe themselves up with the armor of God, Father. Lord, that they will speak revelation, Lord. That they will have knowledge. That they will have new insights of the Word of God, Father. Lord, I pray for wherever you have placed them in whichever fields, Lord, Lord, that you will make them excel, Lord, that they will they will grow, Father, in wisdom to you, Father, that you will give them positions of favor. You will give them positions, Lord, of influence and impact, Father, Lord, that they will be men and women of God, Lord, who carry out your, uh, your word, Lord, who carry out your purposes, Lord, and your plans, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that they wouldn't falter, they wouldn't waste their time, Lord, that no uh, uh, no principles or no things that, that are outside of the world influence them, Father, but the word of God will be planted and will grow in their lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you will create in our children a desire to be a blessing to others, Lord, that they will respond to those in, in compassion. They will not be self-looking. They will not be inward. They will not be self-directed, Father, but they will be directed outside to bring more to your kingdom. Thank you, Father. Use us, Lord, who are here as your useful vessels every day of our lives. Make it count, Lord. Make it count for your glory. Make it count for your goodness. Thank you once again. Thank you for the privilege that we've all had together to walk together, to journey together, to learn, to understand, to to bleed together, to pray together, to encourage one another. Thank you because you are the center of our lives, Lord. Lord, we don't know if we will meet each other in person, but we know, God, that one day we will all come together to rejoice and to praise you, Lord, and to live forever in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Till then, uh, help us to be faithful and to endure in steadfastness, Lord. Protect us, guide us, and bless us. We ask all these things in your precious and matchless name. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, we will meet one day, uh, God willing. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, ma'am.